Chapter 4. Respecting a Father Figure. Man, the first fruit Genesis 1 and 2 says God, begin creating the earth, heaven, and animals. Then God created a man of his image and named him Adam. Then he created a woman of man's rib, named her Eve, and put her in the Garden of Eden all of which was located in Africa. In Genesis 17 4, as a descendant of Adam, God said to Abraham. As for me, behold my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. And in Genesis 22 1-14 it says because of things God did, Abraham was tempted to take his only son, Isaac, to the land of Moriah for a burnt offering. There they built an altar to worship the Lord, and Isaac was the lamb unto God. And when Abraham started to slay his son, an angel appeared and said not to lay a hand on the son. Festival of First Fruits The 15th of Nisan begins Hag Hamatzah, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is a high Sabbath, a Shabbaton. Leviticus 23 10-11, and it is a seven-day feast to the Lord. The day following the Sabbath during Passover is called the Feast of First Fruits. Israel's firstborn of both beast and man were sanctified, made heavenly, and presented unto the Lord. The lands that God had given them as an inheritance he took first fruits at the altar. They were to keep a feast three times a year of unleavened bread, and three times a year the males would appear before the Lord. And thereafter, they all would fall on their knees to worship the Lord and rejoice for all the things he had given them. Festival ceremonies observance was carried out systematically. When standing ripe harvest of barley and wheat was ready to reap. A celebrant would take one sheaf of standing harvest and bring it to the priest. The lone sheaf was called sheaf of the first fruits. The priest would then take the sheaf and wave it before the Lord in his house, this was to be done the day after Sabbath. The priest would wave the sheaf to be accepted upon the firstborn's behalf. Prescribed offerings were also presented, and many other things on earth were too presented before the Lord as first fruits. In both Exodus and Numbers God spoke to Moses about what to tell the children of Israel once they received land. He said when they started to reap the harvest, they were to bring a sheaf of first fruits to the priest. The children were an example of how God harvests people for eternal life in his kingdom. Since he only wanted labor of first fruits from lands of the inheritances they possessed. The blood and fat of their sacrifices he didn't want, and it was to remain until morning. Festival of first fruits resurrection and salvation The Bible says the Pharisees wanted a sign, therefore, Jesus said, since Jonah spent three days and nights in the belly of a whale. Matthew 12:40, the Son of Man will be three days and nights in the heart of the earth. The festival of the sheaf of first fruits was a prophecy of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The theme of his festival of first fruits was resurrection and salvation. Jesus Christ celebrated the festival of the first fruits by offering himself as the first fruit to all future generations. Since Jesus was crucified during the week of Passover, the 14th of Nisan, and rose from the grave three days and nights after he was crucified. Jesus rose on the 17th of Nisan, the day after the festival of first fruits. Saints also rose out of graves where they slept. Though Jesus ascended on high, he continually gives gifts to those who rise from the dead, to become the first fruit of those who are asleep. Jesus is called the first fruit of those who rise from the dead. All who rose from the dead with Christ during his resurrection also became the first fruits of those who rise from the dead. All of which is why you are called to seek first the kingdom of God. Since the beginning of time, God has followed a systematic plan that is symbolized by his holy days. He offers all humanity eternal life with resurrection and salvation in his kingdom. This is how the Spirit of the Father saves and works throughout your life. And that is if you allow him. An example of harvesting in Leviticus 26 3-5 God promised blessings over Israel if they met three certain conditions, he said their lands would increase, increasing workflow between seasons of sowing, threshing, and vintage. And he would protect them from their enemies. The conditions were. 1. Walk in my statues. 2. Keep my commandments. 3. Do them. During sowing season, they scatter seeds throughout the field for propagation. Harvest begins in spring between February and March, and stages continue into autumn. The Passover is celebrated in March and April between the 14th and 21st. During the threshing season, the harvest is ready to be reaped. Remarkably they either picked or pulled the harvest by the roots, while the grains were beaten out with a stick. Vintage begins between August and September, and during the vintage season, they gather vine crops to produce wine. The agricultural year begins in autumn with plowing and sowing. And sowing season in Israel starts in October and lasts until the end of February. Back then, bathing and eating late were reasons to hold resentment toward parents. Natural foods were of a free abundance, and people believed the harvest flowed like milk and honey. Since the feast was prepared after harvest was brought to the altar, a fruitful person was an owner or worker in a garden. Bible study and prayer were done in secret as Jesus said to do, and no one believed the Bible was propaganda or the gospel was watered down. People believed if their thoughts were in vain that they would suffer a consequence. The poor were tortured for taking a stand against local authorities, and they were oppressed. 
people didn't quarrel about things that wouldn't get them ahead in life. Nowadays Christians believe there are no prophecies, and human beings are incapable of being godly. Very few people replace the processed foods for a harvest, and won't visit a church unless you tell them a feast will be prepared. Which explains why many people confuse the work of God's ministry as enemy warfare when processed foods bring out the cowardice in mankind. All this to say, a harvest brings people together whether it is the holidays or not, and a bigger harvest is always needed. For more information on communion with God and first fruits read Exodus, Leviticus and Numbers 28,29,2031. -20 Understanding the Spirit of God. Hezekiah, Ezekias, an ancestor of Jesus was the leader who formed the one God belief for a greater impact, and for this reason, he believed it wasn't necessary to worship other idols or kings. Jesus was born, to be a living sacrifice unto God for all of mankind. Jesus' stepfather and mother were Joseph and Mary. Jesus became the son of God through David, of which was an eternal God, and both had exhibited godly characters more so than their prior generation. Jesus cast out demons, healed and resurrected people from near death, this is how he saved his people while living. Otherwise, they would have continually walked in darkness while dwelling in shadows of death. The people of Israel had become disobedient, by multiplying nations without increasing joy according to the harvest. His ministry helped increase government, judgment, and justice. Once Jesus was beaten near death, he used his resurrection powers, and thereafter all things were created for his glory. Jesus was the last born of the dead gods, and he has been an eternal God for two thousand years, his image is that of a perished and invisible God. Jesus dying for life expectations as the last God lived, helps you understand the dead gods formally, socially, and traditionally. David and Jesus were both willing to step up and become an honorable, and be led versus believing in various gods or objects. Many people worship objects as a god, Jesus' followers value the dead and living sacrifices that he made. The objects can't help people who are lost visualize why fruitful relationships make a difference. Because objects cannot give you spiritual direction and guidance from webs of destruction. And objects don't help to acknowledge living sacrifices over sinful sacrifices. Because an object can't acknowledge evil from righteousness, and an object can't tell you how to deal with an enemy that torments daily. Simply put, an actual God that has shared our struggles is the only way to acknowledge living sacrifices. Having said that, the Bible says Adam was the first man in Genesis 2 7, and so, Jesus wasn't firstborn of every creature as Saul slash Paul preaches in Colossians 1 15. When you discredit creatures for creation, you discredit the first humans which were Africans. God intends for humans to become creators, and he wouldn't use the derivation of animals to label mankind as ungodly. If you believe God created all things, you would know that believing Jesus was firstborn of every creature, doesn't give God glory for all of his creations. Biblical knowledge is a form of vows relating to generations of the human race. It is a promise to keep the commandments, it reveals how assurances in God can strengthen bonds of communication through love in faith, grace, and obedience. It was formed for ancient gods to control the population. All these were reasons why the Bible was written and many more. Ancient gods wanted to look out for future generations' well-being, so we could avoid making the huge mistakes that they had made. Most women's fears of the world are cares of the heart. And once a woman doesn't acknowledge the inner spirit of a father living in her as a righteous sense of direction. She won't acknowledge God or putting faith in him, to be a witness of Jesus' experiences. Jesus told a lawyer, the greatest commandment is to, love your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Another commandment is to honor thy mother and father, however, Jesus says in Matthew 10:37, he that love their father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And this does include others within communities. When you continually engage in naughty girl roles with selfless pride, eventually, you will become too venomous and love it more than God as a father figure. His love came at a cost, and Playgirl's disbelief in his ministry today is risking the foundation on which it stands. Economic recessions generally involve a breakdown of disbelief in the government of judgment and justice, and it leaves more individuals dwelling in darkness, shadows of death. But typically, once a woman has no faith in a reward for doing good or punishment for doing evil, there is no reason to be human. They become willing to only express the evil that they have in the heart. And actually, this proves their devotion to God. Preaching the gospel isn't the only way to glorify our Father in heaven. But you should not become a minister for God if you aren't willing to put aside differences with all of humankind. Jesus' knowledge as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit still lives in many individuals today. You can look to Him for direction and guidance, to form fruitful relationships around you. And you can become fruitful in every righteous good work while increasing knowledge through Him. His ministry is to reach the lost, and this does involve man and womankind coming together to put aside their differences, and to give him the glory for creations. How does the Spirit work in your heart? The Spirit starts full of love forming gentle, humble, and patient self-worth. It remains dominant with certain personality types. The Spirit mediates between the body's feelings and thoughts, 
and the purpose of a person's life plays a key role in how their thoughts are manifested. Whatever comes from the heart prompts an action. If it's a true strategy it will reveal exalted feelings, if it's a false strategy it will reveal depressive feelings. The exalted spirit forms high confidence, while the depressive spirit forms lower confidence. When people feel exalted, they become ambitious and brave. And when people feel depressive, they become cowardly or threatening. When you are confident it reveals a reliable and trustworthy person, and they use righteous willpower to succeed. And when you lack confidence it reveals an unreliable and untrustworthy person, and they use unrighteous willpower to succeed. Acknowledging the Spirit of God means wanting mercy over your life, although it is considered an idol to like or trust in God. Prideful individuals desire self-respect while being opinionated. So, avoid being opinionated unless you are getting paid to give opinions. There are two plans of action that can be taken with the care of the heart. The transformation from false strategies to true strategies involves liking the direction in which it is headed. To like something, you need to know more about it. And to love something, you need to evaluate whether it's worth the attention and love. If you determine that it is worth the time, you submit to it, to evaluate better strategies and to become more exalted by it. And if you determine that it isn't worth the time, you depart from it and completely forget about it. Traditional sense of relationships. Initially, they are relationships that include a proposal, engagement, and then marriage vows. Traditions are passed down from generation to generation, and basically, they are common methods used for forming lifestyles that help form emotional bonds. Marriage is obsolete during the resurrection and Jesus answered and said unto them, The children of this world marry, and are given in marriage, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world, and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage, neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angels, and are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. Luke 20 34 36, Matthew 22 30. According to the Dead Sea Scrolls, Jesus' first marriage with Mary Magdalene represented the marriage for the church, although his second wife was Lydia, he is the spiritual husbandman of the church. Marriage is obsolete during the resurrection, to allow guys and gals to claim an angel and godly status, and to find an eternal relationship. As we consider the principles of the resurrection. 1. We will neither marry nor be given in marriage. 2. We must become worthy to obtain this status. 3. We will not die anymore. 4. We will become equal to the angels. 5. We will become the children of God. The words worthy the Greek translation eligible definition, suitable, worthy of, qualified. Meeting the stipulated requirements, as to participate, compete, or work, qualified. The words obtain the Greek translation acquire definition, buy, purchase, obtain, attain. To gain for oneself, through one's actions or efforts. It is similar to the word seek used by Jesus to refer to first the kingdom of God. The words equal the Greek translation identical definition, exactly alike, same, equal in every respect, interchangeable. Jesus would need angels to become Christ-like about his image. Paul wrote, Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Neither yields ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law but under grace. Romans 6 11 14. As we consider the conditions of the resurrection. 1. You are to become dead to sin and your sinful nature. 2. You are to acknowledge the scripture and the power of God. 3. You are not to give to others your flesh for use of unrighteousness. 4. Sin should not have domination over your life. 5. You are under the law under grace. The word mortal is the Greek definition, a human being that is subject to death. The word lusts is the Greek definition, sexual desire, strong desire, intense craving, to have an obsessive sexual desire. The word instruments is the Greek definition, financial securities, tools used for a specific kind of work. The words dominion are the Greek definition, rule, sovereignty, mastery, or control. Paul also said, but without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11 6. What is an eternal relationship? One both can acknowledge who would make a great leader and can base success on God's standards. One both can acknowledge one another feelings daily while acknowledging love requires forgiveness and forgiving involves love. One enables fruitful concepts, helps fulfill a destiny with grace and truth. One is honorable where both can embrace politeness, while exercising faith with dignity and grace. One both can celebrate things overcome by acknowledging, living sacrifices made. One allows both to smile. One is manageable and doesn't fall apart with fear of struggles, where both can give God glory for all things. When you seek, you shall find it.
otherwise, you get an unfruitful relationship every time. The commitments of vows help strengthen bonds with God and the people. The commitments represent promises that bring assurance of love in faith, grace, and obedience. To ensure love in faith, grace with obedience exercise righteous good works. And acknowledge how the Spirit of God works in and throughout your life with forgiveness. If you are in a relationship with the Heavenly Spirit of God, your relationship won't go on a bumpy ride. And your faith and works will be appreciated. Some Christians fully believe earthly people who have a love for fleshly desires, cannot approach after life heaven though it doesn't exist. While no one has control over who goes to heaven or hell but God, it is possible to experience heaven on earth while claiming angel status. It doesn't mean a guy and gal won't need to marry. Marriage is still respected in our society today, as a belief in a guy and gal's flesh joined together as one. To find a spouse, in reality, live by the word of God. And for the spouse to remain an eternal mate, pray to God, asking him to make the connection last a lifetime. It will give you something to look forward to, so you don't take the relationship for granted. Therefore, you can complete any mission he sends you on. Monogamous Marriage The origin of monogamous marriage is the bride of Jesus Christ and the church, good love with truth. Gals have an inward while guys have an outwardly perspective of love, a guy and gal unite inwardly joining as one. A guy and gal can be purified love cannot, God rebirths the beauty and elegance of a gal into a guy to create qualities and refinement. Without a union reformation renewal of qualities and refinement, a gal becomes unaccountable of actions and behavior, impulsive and unorganized, selfish to her own beliefs which are outward. When a gal unites with her qualities and refinements as a wife, she becomes accountable for actions and behavior, less impulsive and organized, humble and wise to her beliefs which is inward. Intercourse can be richer after a couple joins inwardly, also love and hurt can transfer deeper as a spiritual couple. Monogamous marriage is more favorable for a child's environment, it is more likely to remain a peaceful harmony. Only those who have spiritual love for marriage endures forever. God made woman a help meet for the Garden of Eden. This was Eve a suitable helper, companion, and worker. Genesis 2 18-25, in other terms, it refers to helpmate. Helpmate aka worker is a meek woman with pure thoughts, not controlled by flesh her heart is cleansed free. She acknowledges whatever is put in the heart will come out. The heart, mind, and mouth are parts of the architect. These parts help bring forth fruits of the spirit. They help design the call, direction, and structure God has for her. A helpmeet has beauty and elegance to empower her husband and others. All the good of her and her strength comes from her father, her beauty, and elegance come from her mother. A helpmeet gal acknowledges how to work with her husband by following and submitting, she acknowledges the art of doing so. She is a leader of gals in her circle of friends, she acknowledges the art of doing so. She perceives becoming a helpmeet for her husband exercises her feminine side. She acknowledges natural foods are a must in their family structure. She will not allow her husband to wallow in the funk of depression, she acknowledges the difference between good and evil. For she is a peacemaker, not a vengeful person. Furthermore, she is thankful for everything in all the days of her life. She perceives the man is to ask the woman, possibly her father and mother for her hand in marriage. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Proverbs 31,10, eventually, the new man and woman reign supreme. The guy asking a gal for her hand in marriage is the old school way of marriage, it may be subject to change. What is love? A sacrificial action and it involves risking everything to have it. Ordinarily, the person you are in love with, you show compassion to, so they can recognize mistakes to have faith and patience throughout the marriage. You acknowledge their needs though, it may require doing extraordinary things to prove it isn't just an object. Engagement and then the wedding. An engagement is a promise before the wedding, the length of time between a marriage proposal and a marriage itself. According to a 2015 study, the average length of time for engagement is estimated to be 14.5 months. Otherwise, anywhere from one month to two years is reasonable, depending on what the goals and destinies consist of in a relationship. There is no right or wrong length of time for an engagement. Premarital education improves marriage for long-term strategies. One aspect of a marriage proposal is the engagement ring, it is given before the wedding to wear on the left hand. Usually, it is a gemstone set on a band, this is traditional of the wedding culture. A wedding ring is given during the wedding ceremony and optimistically, the wedding ring is more elaborate than an engagement ring. At this time the engagement ring is worn on the right hand and eventually, put back on the left hand with the wedding ring stacked after the wedding ceremony. The circular shape of a ring represents eternity and infinity, the hole through the ring signifies a doorway leading to events in the future. Giving a ring to someone indicates a commitment to eternal and immortal love. It is best to buy from a jeweler who sells the engagement and wedding ring as a set to get the same styles. Various bridal wedding band types of metals include gold, platinum, or silver. Fortunately, diamonds are a girl's best friend, and sometimes guys' wedding bands can include diamonds or jewels. 
It is wise to stay within a budget for buying wedding bands, planning ceremonies, bachelor and bachelorette parties. Especially if you are choosing not to accept premarital education of any kind. Expectations of a heavenly marriage. The sole purpose for joining a guy and gal souls together for marriage is to have a lifetime companion who shares the gift of love. In Genesis 3:16, God established a guy to rule over the woman, as his wife. When a man and woman leave their father and mother, they are joined together as one flesh. It is appropriate for marriages to be officially divined by a minister. The contract makes wedding vows a promising love before the public to keep. Marriages based on the church are celebrated, through God's love with good fellowship. Witnesses accept and confirm the union covenant while it is being established, after that married couples rejoice and be merry. A heavenly marriage is more than knowing who's to be joined together, who will buy rings, or who will want a divorce for not believing a marriage can work. A heavenly marriage is also more than revealing an outward affair or love for a spouse. It is a harmony unique and worthy of seeking, it forms humble admiration for honorable pleasures. Although it means obeying and paying attention to details of the responsibilities of married life while working together for a long-term marriage. Along with complimenting one another daily, valuing interpersonal beliefs, opinions, and testimonies. It too means hearing your partner without first forming judgment while, having your spouse's best interests at heart. It too means performing righteous good works forms natural heavenly fragrances in the air of a home environment while absorbing and nourishing one another feelings and emotions daily. It too means being sensitive to a spouse's love and touch while believing exquisite and extraordinary things can happen in a spiritual marriage form through two real people. It too means exploring the true nature of protection from outer limits of bodily harm. Diversity in a marriage doesn't mean giving in to polygamous roles, this is taking steps backward, polygamous roles have been going on since the beginning of time. And getting married doesn't mean waiting for an afterlife to experience eternal life, it means hearts being open to heaven on earth. Only kind words and wisdom of law should come out of either the gal or guy's mouth, both should fear the father. All these things while acknowledging righteous responses to impulses and remaining true to events in your current life. Eventually, the new guy and gal reign supreme. Today the guy as a leader and gal as a helpmate have two major responsibilities to provide financial support and love, this too means a gal pays the tab when she asks him out on a date. The guy and gal must be submissive while honoring and respecting one another daily. Both must notice and prefer one another exceedingly, and show love and kindness toward one another daily. Once they do have kids, both are to take care of them by providing financial support, leadership, and love. A marriage gives rights to have children who will be given an inheritance from goods that are made lawful. Thereafter either should tell the other, I believe in you, I thank you for loving me and the children the way you do. When you marry you get more support from family, friends, and the community. Women need to acknowledge being the weaker vessel and let men dominate in marriages. Though gals show anger and bitter emotions more than sensitive ones, they must show compassion toward their husbands daily. This is to impact the relationship for a long-term marriage. Without seeking correction, a man tend to lack confidence he can become a better man, and condemning him is only for the corrector above. Couples can overcome challenges together, you don't need to call one another out on every issue. Fix issues together, other issues just let them go. Married couples thereafter love each other in body and spirit inwardly throughout eternity. Below has been translated. Strong and weaker vessel. The husbandman is to dwell with his wife according to knowledge giving her honor, she is to be a weaker vessel incorruptible in the sight of God at a good price. The guy's manner is renewed with the grace of life to a meek and quiet spirit, a hidden guy of the heart, not outwardly troubled with fear. Wives are to be subject to their husbands either will be coupled with fear, and both should hinder not prayers. They are to suffer for righteousness sake to be happy, not for unrighteousness sake or they will be sad. Both will inherit a blessing the Lord God is against evil. I Peter 3 1 22, excessiveness can result in evilness including drinking, drugs, eating, lusting, sex, and violence. Guys tend to forget what a weaker vessel consists of. They go into marriage as a strong vessel, and once they can't or won't change all evil ways, they become a weak vessel to remain in the marriage. Mainly they do everything outwardly which results in being troubled with fear outside of a marriage rather, being coupled with fear within a marriage to allow the wife's guidance to work effectively. Being open to the public's eyes there is no limit on how far an extent or intent will go. When a guy does things inwardly, he doesn't expose his extent and intent before the public. He acknowledges changing all his evil ways to become the stronger vessel. Marriage relationship. A long-term relationship ought to be built on the spiritual marriage according to the church, formally, socially, and traditionally. This is to form rational concepts that are well thought out and to value each other's strengths for heavenly and eternal things. And to find comfort in one another while measuring righteous acceptability, accountability, possibilities, and responsibilities. While repairing debt obligations and other relationships that are of great importance. Support one another, and don't make hasty decisions without confirming mutual agreements. The married couples are to exercise patience during long sufferings and continually keep a loving, joyful, and peaceful environment. 
give to a charity in time of need, but not with your last. And most importantly, respect others' privacy and people of authority. Growing in a marriage. Couples who marry focuses on continual married love, eternity is in the one love that has joined together. Continual love in the husband and wife along with wisdom endures forever, during the growth process couples enter the blessings of marriage stages, it stores in their souls. Though the joining of souls and minds together means they are no longer two but one flesh. Matthew 19 6, the bond helps grow a friendship with love, friendship before love meditates between the engagements and vows to form steadfast love. Steadfast love creates married love, and that love creates its friendship. A husband or wife ought not to perceive anyone desirable than each other, this includes to feel, hear, smell or touch. Some people will want to see the marriage fail however, it takes educational and spiritual knowledge to make wise choices, and involuntary fears can hinder growth. Try not to harbor other people's fears of your marriage. Growing in faith doesn't mean giving your spouse a list of demands before you are willing to do right by the both of you. Getting married doesn't mean, looking for reasons to get a divorce. The Bible teaches there will be sufferings and trial tests, and once you acknowledge overcoming the suffering of trial test diminishes. A lot of people experience love warfare in various ways, so it is very common to come in marriage looking for reasons to dismiss a worthy potential eternal mate. Most reasons for break UPS are insignificant, to valuing an eternal mate. But anger convinces you to give in to destruction and violence rather than keep the peace when you are not acknowledging God's signs and wonders. Look for growth in the marriage rather than, finding ways to shrink the growth on any given basis. You ought to have faith doing exquisite and extraordinary things for growth in the marriage, to enable rewards at the end of sufferings and trials. However, neither is supposed to choose when the end is near. This is one major reason you can't bring baggage into a marriage. You must be open to long-term relationship building, to enable greater possibilities to take place. If you come to a marriage unable to invest all, you're already in agreement to create love warfare. Marriage is to be built on God's love to be able to let your guard down when it is your turn to lead. Whoever leads, lead fiercely and righteously. Once both are in a habit of going when times are tough it is like standing in the easy yoke with Christ. Reasons to value good leadership in a marriage. A stay-home parent or person who has less leadership character would value good leadership qualities. If a person is blind or disabled, they too would value the other person's leadership. A person with good leadership character acknowledges how both in the relationship can develop to higher quality standards. Mainly they are loyal in responding to the right opportunities and have longevity in the call of their direction. They believe education and obedience pay off. Also, they execute current results, to not remain in poverty for the rest of their earthly lives. They acknowledge the difference between, miracle working person versus a people pleasing person. And can spot a fruitful person from an evil person all while acknowledging legendary influences. What is my duty in a marriage? Acknowledge how both can transform into righteous people, to avoid both developing habitual habits. Trust and obey the will of God, it will allow you to trust and obey your partner. Have mercy on them at all times. Standard behavior in relationships means everything when you have influential people influencing your life daily. Stay home parent responsibilities. Generally, they are to teach them to be a loving and kind person toward others. And to ensure the children are getting a great quality of education and following instructions in school, contribute support toward their educational activities. It is wise to teach them everything they are to know for the following grade ahead of time. Embrace the children's achievements and communication skills by helping them with their homework. Help them to research educational topics for the current grade, to allow them to be knowledgeable. Educational academics, athletic, classroom or course of study work that includes, homework requirements for activities, development, materials, practice, projects, research, etc. Buying books for them or taking them to the local library to read will execute current results. Encourage growth and development for nutritional guidance by making sure they're eating natural foods. Set goals keep them, and remain focused. What does having supportive parents mean for kids? Once a guy doesn't want anything to do with one or more of his biological children it is classified as a form of abandonment, just as it is for a gal. When parents accept their biological children and give them guidance and support, they don't have to seek love from outside adults or school teachers. It is when parents take time to give them a sense of respect toward authority, they can feel comfort, compassion, empowerment, happiness, hope, joy, love, and peace toward their parents. It would also allow them to value embracing inner strength, and allow them to be accountable for actions with self-awareness. They too can value effortless behavior, something you can't buy nor replace. All this would help them acknowledge the Father's spirit living in them, something needed to believe in God. Avoid taking your husband for granted. Wives today infringe entitlements upon husbands, this is a rising issue that is leading to divorce. Either they selfishly spend their husband's money exclusively for their use or think a guy should work without holidays all while, she becomes unconcerned about his health. 
Sometimes he may come home after work and perform housekeeping duties even though, she may be either sitting at home with the kids or working a job where she sits down all day. Wives avoid passing obsessions with stuff onto your kids, show appreciation and gratitude for the chores he does around the house if you can get him to do them. It isn't about how much you can get him to do, and you don't need to act like it is his job. If you aren't willing to give him credit for being considerate and thoughtful, you may create love warfare once you don't acknowledge when to stop. If you're not wanting him to show an act of kindness by performing chores, then he probably won't do them anyway. Otherwise specifically, praise or thank him for the various things he does, and not just the chores. Get charming and expressive with the thanks by not needing to say thanks every time, and even thank you notes are worth the time. Also, don't wait until he has to work extra hours to write thank you notes, it might only become a slap in the face. And don't be indecisive by only thanking him at home, praise and thank him in public too. Sympathetically, it shows signs of abusiveness to physically or verbally discipline your husband in public just as it does a child. If he fails at something don't chew his head off, making him feel his time was wasted. Most importantly celebrate his accomplishments and successes to avoid annoying him with failures. Praise him for being a part of your accomplishments and success, and acknowledge your failures as something can be overcome. Allow him off day holidays and relax time, and then let him spend his time completing assignments he plans to work on. All this will allow him to reward you at the end of suffering and trials. Submitting over manipulating in a marriage. Manipulation is a process of handling, influencing, managing, or treatment in an unfair manner. The manipulator tries to change circumstances or outcomes to suit one's advantage, agenda, position, or purpose. It is commonly expressed in many affairs and matters dear to the heart, but the behavior isn't angelic. Couples that manipulate one another influence each other's wise decisions, especially the ones that form disagreements. But couples that learn how to submit, show submissiveness in everything they do and say, this is how marriages last 50 years or longer. It is an agreement between both in a marriage to submit. Marriages who don't acknowledge the submissive attitude are the ones having huge conflicts about things of no significant value. To abide by faith in a marriage will require practice. You can't forget a submissive attitude and expect to remain in a marriage without working things out, and you can't lay blame every time you fail at keeping promises. The submissive attitude leaves space for error and acknowledges everything is not always going to be perfect. Couples must form mutual agreements that will last throughout trial tests and sympathetically, you don't need to manipulate one another only submit to one another. Just as faith shines the light so you can be able to see God in spirit, the same thing applies in marriage. Faith in God will give you rest in the soul, the same thing applies in marriage. You have to come back to believing in a God to find peace, the same thing applies to marriage. Having said your beliefs, faith, and light shine for the spouse to receive peace and rest in the spirit of the marriage. Reuniting after marriage. Remarriage takes place after a divorce or death of a spouse, remaining married, and remarrying provides mental and physical health benefits. Though the single life has fewer mental and physical health benefits, generally singles are more susceptible to continual usage of alcohol and drugs than married couples. While alcohol and drug usage can lead to divorce, most times it leads to not getting married at all. Marriage after death of a spouse. Widows are judged more critically, than other gals entering into a marriage. However, there is no length of time to wait, other than waiting on another eternal mate. Sometimes it takes a little while to get over the death of a spouse, this happens when you want to remain loyal to them. They may be still dear to the heart, and you would rather continue honoring and respecting their concerns. The ex-spouse will always have a place in your heart, it is wise to acknowledge the loyalty you expressed while they were living. And after that, you don't have to feel you have let them down once you do move on. When you are open to the cares of the world again and challenges, it will happen. At that time, you will be excited about experiencing appropriate feelings that will expand to love for the new marriage partner. It is then the new partner will be worth the determination, efforts, and time that too will require patience.